What's up everybody, it's Man of Low Moral Fiber here. My name's Luke, and I've been doing a bad slash worst gear in Borderlands 2 series, or slash does it suck, and I'm kind of expecting this weapon to fall under the bad category, not necessarily the worst, but I will say that it will probably suck, or at least that's my prediction. We're here with a weapon you guys have been asking me to test out, which is the Retcher. Now this is a Seraph E-Tech shotgun from the first campaign DLC, Captain Scarlet and her Pirate's Booty. If we look at this gun here, we can see that it has a really low magazine size at 5. It has a low fire rate at 1.3, and the accuracy there is absolutely abysmal. The red text says "U," and that kind of, you know, lets us know that it only comes in corrosive because this gun is not available in fire, shock, or slag. And it's a pretty bad weapon overall. Obviously, since it's TDR, it's going to have that throw-reload effect. I have it here with the foregrip accessory, which adds two extra projectiles. And this is what actually makes the practicable slow hand pretty good, because E-Tech shotguns generally only have one splat ball. However, um, with the retcher and the slow hand, you can actually get it with the prefix that adds two projectiles. And I think that will actually make the shots from it actually do okay. Now you can see here it has a special effect on this throw reload where it's also shooting acid globs um, from the reload. So I think that's its special effect basically is that on the throw reload we're getting that extra acid ball that comes out in several directions and uh, or just a few directions actually and deals a little bit of extra damage. And we'll see if in practice if that's actually able to hit anything. I'm going to go ahead and spec in here and see how we do against the Washburn Refinery, which is going to have a lot of enemies who are weak to corrosive, which should help us out. Now, I am going to go ahead and get down to velocity, but um, I have to pick up headshot along the way, and obviously this gun cannot get critical hits, so that's not going to help, and I think that will... Um, decrease its effectiveness quite a bit. I'm going to spec into bore so that you can see that this weapon can't bore, or at least that's my theory at least. We'll see if that's actually what happens in practice. I'll go ahead and spec into killing blow grim and follow through just so I have a little bit of survivability and movement speed as well. Um, I am going to spec into two fang actually because the gun has such a low fire rate that I expect that two fang will actually help a little bit. And then I'm going to put my remaining points in precision to tighten up the spread just a little. And we'll see how that actually works in practice. I'm going to be wearing a Chaotic Neutral Rogue Calm. And that only boosted the magazine size up to 7, which isn't that great. But it did boost Velocity and Two Fang as well, and our fire rate. So that should account for um, some of our fire rate and bullet travel problems. Anyway, this is the first enemy here. Go ahead and get Slag and Kunai on him, and we'll see how quickly we can kill him here. We're also getting that ambush bonus when he was looking away, and we were able to kill him in under a magazine, so I guess that's decent. Um, I'm going to go ahead and throw that out there. Try to get all of these loaders converged a little bit. Get Slag on these guys. And then see if we're able to kill them. So I guess it works okay on groups of enemies like that. We'll see if we're able to keep taking out these enemies here. From at a distance, um, because I'm specced so heavily into velocity, we are getting a little bit of help there. And you can see, though, that at distance this gun is almost unusable. Um, I wasn't getting hardly any damage on that guy at all, even though I had 11 points in velocity. The throw reload isn't seeming to do that much damage. I noticed that the uh, extra pellets from the reload aren't really helping me at all. They're kind of just getting shot straight up in the air. And that's not really a good thing. I don't think you're going to hit too many enemies with that. I'm going to need to take down this guy's shield with my kunai and slag grenade here. Um, because otherwise I don't expect us to be able to bust his shield too easily with this weapon that only comes in corrosive. So, you know, we're working through enemies here, but I think that's strictly due to the fact that we have that good prefix on the gun. Um, I don't think we would be dealing very much damage at all without the um, gentle prefix, which is boosting our projectile count. Uh, without it, I think we'd ge be getting almost nothing as far as damage goes. In fact, we'd be getting, you know, basically a third of the damage we're getting now, which would be really, really bad because we're not even getting that much damage as it is. It looks like there's a badass loader out there, so 
we'll see if we're actually able to deal with him um, among these other loaders here. I am already getting low on transfusion grenades, but uh, there are some boxes in here that we might be able to deal with. Um, get those real quick and uh, try to get some slag and kunai on the big guy here and maybe some damage. We'll see. Two Fang is boosting my fire rate pretty well when it procs, and that helps a little bit, I guess. Excellent. So we dealt with the big guy. Um, we are low on ammo now, or at least grenade ammo, at least. Um, and I'll probably need to rectify that situation before we can continue. Um, otherwise, I don't think I'll survive very long. So I'm just going to run back here to this little box and grab some more grenade ammo, and then we'll continue again. Oh, we only got one there, so yikes. Um, if we can get past these guys here, though, um, there are three more boxes of ammo before the next badass enemy, so that's pretty good. Ignore the fact that I did a lot of damage to that guy there with the Pimpernel just trying to slag him. Um, the TDR reload might help with Axton, as I said. However, with zero here, it's not really doing too much for us at all. Go ahead and get slag on these guys. Excellent. So we killed those two guys. We got one more guy over here. And then we'll be moving on to the badass and the stage fight. And we're moving through pretty slow here, so I think that will probably be about as far as we can get. Oh, it is worth mentioning here that uh, it's pretty easy to kill yourself with the Retcher. The uh, throw reload, for example, or if you accidentally just shoot too close to yourself. I'll try it here, try not to fully kill myself, but show that the gun can damage you. As you can see there, it can damage you. And then it's also very likely that it will apply a uh, corrosive damage over time to you as well. So you really have to watch out for that because if you just shoot too close, you'll damage your shield and then apply a corrosive damage over time to you. And you'll probably end up killing yourself, which is the opposite of what you're looking for, obviously. So now we've got another badass here. This is kind of anticlimactic because uh, we've already killed one badass. Um, so we'll see how it goes here. Definitely need to uh, get some damage on him before he takes me out here. Excellent. So I guess the throw reload ended up getting me a second wind. Uh, that was pretty neat, I guess. I should have thrown an extra slag transfusion grenade knowing that the weapon would take a little while to kill him. And I probably would have survived that encounter. Now we're going to be moving ahead here and we'll kill some of these other enemies. Um, the fact that this gun can't bore um, also means that it probably wouldn't be able to get chain reaction with Maya and that definitely hurts its you know productivity and everything like that and the fact that it can't get critical hits um, is also another thing that really you know makes this weapon kinda suck in my mind I'm gonna go ahead and get slag on this guy don't need to waste a transfusion grenade on him because I've only got five left and I imagine needing the rest of them here so, I guess one cool thing is that these orbs aren't going to bounce off this guy's spinning arms. And that's probably decent. I don't think that guy's slagged. Shoot him with the Pimpernel real quick to slag him. Take him out before the Exploders get here. Excellent. So I'll let the Exploders kind of work on themselves as I usually do. No need to waste too much ammo on those guys. Ooh, I let one of them damage me. That was pretty stupid. Excellent. So those transfusion trails will hopefully get to me and then I'll be okay. Excellent. So now we've got one more exploder that needs to blow up. And then we'll work on killing some of these enemies in here. Another exploder. Excellent. So we finally got an enemy that needs killing. Go ahead and slag him real quick. So the gun can do decent damage if you get it in the gentle prefix where you're actually going to get those extra projectiles. Otherwise, the gun is going to be totally terrible. Um, if this only had one, um, one splat orb, it would be absolutely pitiful. However, with these multiple splat orbs, I guess it is doing okay. Which is, it's okay at damage. However, the gun itself is still really bad. The fact that it only comes in corrosive is kind of lame. I guess if it came in all elements, it would be a decent shotgun. Um, you know, it's okay against these corrosive 
uh, vulnerable enemies and everything like that, but obviously its effectiveness is really weak. Usually uh, guns that only come in one element, like the twister and blockhead, are ordinarily very, very powerful. However, this one definitely leaves a lot to uh, a lot to desire. It seems like if you wanted to use an e an e tech splat gun, you would definitely use the slow hand because one, I think it deals more damage. It definitely has a better magazine size. It's probably more accurate, and uh, obviously it's got the healing effect as well, which is pretty awesome. This one doesn't really have that many uh, redeeming qualities at all. We're going to try to kill this big guy here, and that'll probably be the end of the video because I know it's taken us a little bit of time to actually work through all of these enemies here. Excellent. So you guys had wanted to see this weapon. It was definitely a good recommendation, and it was the Retcher. Again, this is a weapon that is exclusive to the first campaign DLC for Borderlands 2. Definitely don't buy that DLC for this gun, but there are a ton of other weapons and gear in that particular DLC which are actually awesome. And some of my favorite weapons in the game, actually, the Pimpernel and Rapier. Anywho, this gun is very meh. You know, it's not terrible if you get it in the gentle prefix, but it's definitely not a good weapon. And so, as always, guys, I thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, be sure to leave those in the comments, and I'll try to answer those for you, along with any other additional comments you might have. If you haven't yet taken the time to subscribe, please do so. I'd really appreciate that. Otherwise, I do hope to catch you next time. Bye, guys.